Hello, my name is Mr. Rutherford and I teach physics and math at Shakopee High School in uh, Minnesota. So starting out today we're going to be looking at kind of the basics of scientific notation. So we're going to talk about what scientific notation is and how to get a number into scientific notation. Normally scientific notation would be used for very large and very small numbers. Today we're going to look at just kind of moderately large and moderately small numbers just to kind of get a feel for it. Then uh, we'll move on into a video where we'll do some examples with bigger numbers and smaller numbers. So, <clears throat> first of all, as I said, scientific notation is used for numbers that are very big and very small. Well, so what we're going to do to start with is we're going to look at uh, how exponents work just on a quick uh, and easy level. So, first of all, it's important to remember that if you take a number like 261 and you take it to the zeroth power, that actually equals 1. Anything to the zeroth power equals 1. Okay? Check it on your calculator, I dare you. So, for our purposes, we're going to be looking a lot at 10 to the zero, which also equals 1. So that means I can take a number like 261, for example, and I can multiply it by 10 to the zero, and that still equals 261. I have not changed the number at all. It's very important in scientific notation that you realize, even though we're writing it differently, we're writing the number this way, maybe, or in some other way, it's still the same number. It still equals that same value. So that's pretty important. Moving on with exponents, okay, we have 10 to the 0 equals 1. Well, 10 to the 1 is just 110, essentially. 10 to the 2nd is 10 times 10 which is 100, and so on. 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10, three times, which is 1,000, okay? Just the basics of exponential notation. So, um, <clears throat> what we're going to do is take an example, 3,600. And we're going to rewrite this uh, in different ways and look at which of those ways is actually written in scientific notation. So. Note that I could take 3,600, and I could times by 1, and I still have 3,600, right? Still the same number. I could also take 360 and times by 10. That's still equal to 3,600. I could take 36, and I could times by 10 twice. Still the same number. Or I could take 3.6 and times by 10 three times. And for that matter, we could even go to 0.36 and times by 10 four times. Okay? Well, now I'm going to rewrite all of these using powers of 10 that we just looked at. So this, 3600 times 1, I would rewrite as times 10 to the 0. Okay? So if I'm writing it in power of 10 notation. Well, that's the same as 360 times 10 to the 1st, which is the same as 36 times 10 to the 2nd which is the same as 3.6 times 10 to the third. So, <clears throat> from here, um, what we want to do is look at what scientific notation actually is. Scientific notation dictates that we always have, when, when we write in true standard scientific notation, a single digit, then a decimal point, any remaining digits, we usually leave off zeros. Not always, we'll talk about that in a later lesson, okay? We don't always leave off zeros, but we often leave off zeros. So we have 3.6 times 10 to the third. This is our official scientific notation for the number 3600. Okay? So now what we're going to do is do the same thing for a really small number. Now, note the progression here. We went and wrote out our powers of 10, our, number, our multiples of 10, rather, and then we rewrote them as powers of 10. I'm going to show you a shortcut to that later. So let's try a smaller number, something like 0.0023. Okay? Now, one thing to remember here is that we're now looking at a small number. So instead of writing powers of 10 that are positive, we're going to actually look at some powers of 10 that are negative. So as an aside here, which I'll do actually in a different color, let's do our aside in red, we have something like 10 to the 0 is equal to 1. Well, what happens if we have 10 to the negative 1? Well, that's actually the same as taking 1 divided by 10. Okay? 10 to the negative 2 is like saying 1 divided by 10 divided by 10. We're dividing by 10 twice. Okay? So that's equal to 1 hundredth. Okay? 10 to the negative 3 is the same as saying 1 divided by 10 divided by 10 divided by 10. Okay? So that's how negative exponents work. Well, 
So we're going to take this number and we're going to try rewriting it in different ways. So we eventually want to get to this point where we have a, decimal, or a number, a digit, then a decimal, then a digit again. Okay? So I'm going to say that 0 0.0023, which I'll write as 0 0.0023, I could write that as times 10 to the 0, because that's just multiplying by 1. Remember, 10 to the 0 equals 1. I could also say that's 0 0.023, divided by 10, right? If I divided by 10, I would get my decimal place would move over one further and I'd still have 0 0.0023. This number is the same as that number. I could also write 0 0.023 divided by 10, divided by 10. Nope, sorry, I made a mistake there. This should be 0.23 now. And I'm gonna divide, divide by 10 twice to get these two zeros. Or last of all, I could have 0. 2.3, divide by 10, divide by 10, divide by 10, okay? And all of these numbers are exactly the same as this. They all equal 0 0.0023. So now I'm going to rewrite these all in powers of 10 notation, okay? So this one I would actually, if I was being consistent here, I'd write this as times 1, not times 10 to the 0. Okay? So now I'm going to rewrite that saying, hey, that's the same as 0 0.0023 times 10 to the 0. This is 0 0.023 times 10 to the negative 1, because that's just like dividing by 10 once. This is 0 0.23 times 10 to the negative second. And this, last of all, is 2.3 times 10 to the negative third. And once again, since we have a single digit, a decimal, and then the rest of our digits, leaving off the zeros, again, not all the time, but for now, that's what we're going to kind of look at. That is our official scientific notation for 0 0.0023.